Okay, so here we go, part three. Um, remember to do part two and one if you can. It's best to do as much as you can before your test, especially past paper questions, because your teachers, I guarantee you, will use past paper questions in your test, if not all of the questions being past paper. Um, teachers typically don't make their own questions, and so just by doing these past paper questions, you can be you, you can be so ready for the test and do really well. Um, this is like the best advice I think anyone can give you that has done the IB. Out of experience, we know the teachers use only past paper questions. And so if you're interested in, in finding these past paper questions, I can easily send you a link for where the past papers are. Or if you want them organized in by topic, which is what I did, it took a long time. But if you would like that, just email me and I'll let you know how to get them. Th that'll basically save you a crap load of time to be able to... Uh, not have to go find them in every past paper, but rather they're organized in one document. So again, uh, this will be very brief. I'll do questions quite quickly. I won't try and spend too much time explaining because I made teaching videos for that. Uh, otherwise, they would be useless if I spend my whole time trying to explain every question in, in a lot of detail. So first, give this one a go by yourself. So laboratory analysis of DNA from a 40,000-year-old woolly mammoth use the, the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, what role did the PCR have in the analysis? So PCR is a technique, um, if you don't know, is a technique that amplifies DNA. What that means is, um, amplify means to increase or to make a lot of. So for example, um, if you have a little bit of DNA and you want more, then you have to put it in a PCR, a polymerase chain reaction, and that will give you millions of copies within a matter of hours, okay? So, A, DNA denaturation. No, it's not this one because denaturation means to kind of destroy, to, to break. And well, you don't actually break, break DNA by putting it into a PCR. You're making more of it, not breaking it. DNA comparison. No, you're not comparing DNA. Um, legit, all you're doing is making more DNA, so it can't be comparison. DNA separation? No, you're not separating DNA either. If you've heard of if you've heard of gel electrophoresis, gel electrophoresis is is a technique that you use to separate DNA. Uh, DNA amplification? Yeah, amplification means to make more of, and that's exactly what a PCR machine does. Okay, next one. A small amount of a suspect's DNA is obtained from a crime scene. What techniques would be used to carry out DNA profiling? So first, um, yeah, you give it a go, but I'll explain exactly how to make a DNA profile, and then hopefully that will match one of the options. So to do a DNA profile, um, you need to do two things. So first, we noticed the question is stating a small amount of a suspect's DNA. This means that there is not enough DNA. So the first thing you do, you need to do to make a DNA profile is make more DNA. And that's exactly what we what we mentioned in this question. DNA amplification, making more DNA. So you need to do a PCR first. That's the first thing you gotta do. Okay, so by doing a PCR, you're taking a little bit of DNA that you got from a from a crime scene, and you're gonna and this PCR machine will make sure to amplify that and make a, a lot. Because the problem is if you only have a little bit of DNA, the next thing you, you need to do, which is called gel electrophoresis, won't work. So for example, if you have a tiny bit of DNA and you put it, and you put it in this machine, it won't work. So you, you really need a lot of DNA, and so you need to amplify it with a PCR machine. Once you have enough DNA, this gel electrophoresis will now work. So what is gel electrophoresis? I'll try and, I'll try and make this a bit bigger. So once we have the DNA, so say you're Johnny Bravo, and we put your DNA into this sample well, this little slit here, and we turn on this machine, what will happen is your DNA will travel and separate. So you can see here, Johnny Bravo's DNA separated separated into two, one, one piece here and one piece here. So how does this work? So every individual's DNA is negatively charged. And I'm sure you've heard before that negative and positive things attract. Opposite charges attract. 
and by turning on this machine, you turn on this positive charge here. And so your negatively charged DNA in here will slowly move towards the positive side here. But your DNA that you put in here is in different pieces. So the lighter pieces will travel really far and the heavier pieces will travel less. And that makes sense because you can imagine trying to pull a heavy thing compared to a light thing. The heavy thing is harder to pull, right? And so what's really useful about this technique is that every individual has different DNA and different DNA will separate differently. So for example, if I put another person's DNA here, it won't have the same out it won't have the same outcome as Johnny Bravo's DNA. It will be completely different and that's because their DNA is simply different. So using this technique, you can put many people's DNA in and create a DNA profile. That's pretty much what a DNA profile is. It's pretty much your um, who you are in terms of your DNA. So this is how um, this is Johnny Bravo's DNA profile. This is who he is. His DNA is different from um, John Wick's and Ronaldo's. So that's what a DNA profile is. It's just basically showing who you are in terms of your DNA. And because people have different DNA, it will separate differently in a gel electrophoresis machine. And this will prove that you are different from other people. Okay, so you can see the two techniques we used was PCR and gel electrophoresis. So we can see immediately the answer is C, but let's quickly eliminate why A, B, and D is incorrect. So we can see the first part of A is correct, gel electrophoresis is used, but paternity testing is not. So what is paternity testing? Paternity testing is um, what you do to prove that somebody is your child or that, or, um, uh, or that, yeah, or that someone is your parent. So you can use gel electrophoresis. So you can use a DNA profile to prove that someone is your parent. So you can use a DNA profile to prove that someone is your parent, but you can't use a paternity test to make a DNA profile. You see what I mean? Like this one, this thing isn't, isn't a way to help make a DNA profile. You rather use the DNA profile that you made with PCR and gel electrophoresis to prove that someone is your parent because p um, people who have similar DNA will have a similar DNA profile. So his son, for example, Johnny Bravo's son will have a really similar DNA. And so their DNA will look really, really similar on a DNA profile. Not the exact same because they don't have the exact same DNA. Otherwise they would look exactly the same if they have the exact same DNA. Rather they have similar DNA and so the DNA will come out in a similar way. So you can see they're they're related, whereas um, people who are have uh, people who you are not related to will have very different DNA, kind of like this, kind of like the scenario here. Again, the reason why B is incorrect is because paternity testing is also there, and we know you don't use paternity testing to make a DNA profile; rather, the opposite way around. C is correct. D is incorrect because this topic is not even related to um, DNA, like. Um, it's, it's a completely different topic in the IB. So this is like the odd one out. So let's go to one more question. I hope this is making sense so far. I can't go into that much detail. So watch the videos if you want clarification. So why can DNA profiling be used to determine paternity? So again, this all makes sense now. DNA profiling is this. This is a DNA profile. How, why can this be used to prove or determine paternity. Remember, paternity is um, who your parent is or to prove that you are the parent of a certain kid. So why can this be used? I sort of just went over that. So I'll give you, I'll open this so you can try it by yourself first. Um, so why can we use this? I said before, people who have similar DNA, like a parent and a kid, will have a similar DNA profile. And so, for example, if these three people um, think they're the father, and let's say, pretend this is not a crime scene, pretend this is the kid's DNA. So, um, so these three people think they're the father, kind of like in Mamma Mia, the story, pretend they're the father, the only thing you can do to prove that which one is the father is collect their DNA, do th make a DNA profile, and also do the same with the kid's DNA, and then compare. The one whose DNA is the most similar to the kid's DNA will be the father. 
So in this case, pretend this is the kid's DNA. It is the most similar to John Wick's DNA. And so John Wick is probably the father. Do you understand? Um, so let's see the options. Option A is saying the genes of children are exactly the same as their fathers. So this is not true. Your genes, think about it. Do you look exactly like your father? No. Do you look exactly like your mother? No. The reason, If you had the exact same genes or the exact same DNA, you would look exactly the same as your father or your mother. So this one is not true. This is not the reason why. B, half the genes of children are the same as their fathers. So this is true because um, your mother and your father, when they uh, reproduce, they pass on half of their DNA each because half and half will make a whole. And so you will have all the DNA you need. Um, so this one is correct. So this is, so this is why DNA profiling can be used to determine paternity because your genetics is half the same as your father's. And so this result, your, your DNA profiles will be very similar to each other. And so it, it will match. How about C? The father passes on all of his genes to each of his children. This is incorrect. Your father does not pass on all of his genes. He only passes on half. Because imagine, if you passed on all of his genes, um, and your mother also did that, you would have double the amount of DNA as a normal person, and so you would technically not be human. That's why C is not correct. How about D? The father passes on a fraction of his genes equal to the number of his children. Now, this is such a weird one. Because imagine, how could, your, how, could, how could that even be possible? Because how do you know how many kids you're going to have? Because this question is basically saying, if you're, if you're going to have six kids, you're, each time you have a kid, only a sixth of your DNA will be passed on. But how do you know you're going to have six kids? And that's just weird. And either way, if, if this was true, you would have so little DNA. Because, for example, if you, if, if, um, if you have five brothers, that means six kids total, you would only have a sixth the amount of DNA as a normal person. So that's not right. You know, you need half the DNA from each parent. That's why B is correct. And that's why, because the DNA is so similar, that's why you can use, it, make a, use a DNA profile to prove that someone is your father or your, or your mother. So I'll, I'll make another part to this and um, hopefully you find it useful for your tests.